Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. In the year 1999, the seeds were sown for one of the most downright sadistic and evil criminal organizations ever seen in Mexico and beyond, Los Zetas. An organization which changed the game for the worst. Of course, originally, they were formed as the Gulf Cartel's armed wing under the leadership of Osiel Cardenas. Immediately after their inception, they made waves due to their brutality and paramilitary tactics. Of course, the original Zetas were made up of ex-Mexican Special Forces officers, which gave them a significant advantage over other cartels at the time. Simply put, the other criminal organizations didn't have the skilled combatants that Los Zetas had. As the years passed, however, and quite frankly, in a bid to keep up, other cartels would follow suit and create their own armed wings. The landscape had changed, and changed for the worst, ever since the introduction of paramilitary and guerrilla warfare tactics in the late 90s and early 2000s. The situation has become more and more untenable as the years pass, leading us to the scenario in which we see today, where the murder rate in Mexico has reached an alarming rate and where narco-terrorism seems to be becoming the norm. In short, the introduction and success of Los Etas influenced cartels across Mexico to change the way they operated. Narco banners, propaganda, and public acts of violence became the norm. And in conjunction with the developing nature of technology and the internet, cartels would use this to push their own bloody narrative including the popularization of the execution video, a tactic in which Los Zetas used to spread fear, terror, and panic amongst the public and amongst their rivals. In the early to mid 2000s, Los Zetas were wildly successful under the leadership of the Gulf Cartel, allowing the Golfos to acquire more territory, drug routes, and influence throughout Mexico. The partnership was fruitful, however, things soon turned sour, especially after the extradition of Osiel Cardenas in 2007. Truth be told, until this point, Osiel Cardenas managed to keep a tight leash on the Zetas, but after his extradition, tensions between the Zetas and the Gulf Cartel started to grow. Due to the tumultuous nature of the Gulf Cartel leadership at this time, Los Zetas became increasingly frustrated with the Gulf organization. Truth be told, in the late 2000s, Los Etas had grown so much that they actually carried more influence than Gulf Cartel members. They outnumbered the Gulf Cartel, they were bringing in the majority of the revenue, and essentially, from their perspective, they felt that the new leader of the Gulf organization should have been from the Zeta ranks. In fact, the Zetas were nominating their leader, Heriberto Lascano, to take control of the Golfo organization. However, high up members of the Gulf Cartel were nominating Gwilin Cardenas, brother of former leader Ociel, and Jorge Eduardo Costilla Sanchez, nominations in which the Zetas were unhappy with. Another sticking point was that the Golfos wanted to form a truce with their rivals in Sinaloa, which Los Etas did not want to recognize, allegedly preferring an alliance with the Beltran Leyva cartel. Arguably, the final nail in the coffin for the Gulf Cartel Los Etas relationship was when Samuel Flores Borrego, a lieutenant of the Gulf Cartel, killed Zetas lieutenant Sergio Pena Mendoza, alias El Concord Free, due to a disagreement over the drug corridor of Reynosa, whom both protected. Los Etas demanded that the cartel hand over the killer, but the Gulf Cartel refused. At this point, it was on. 2010 marked the start of the war between the Gulf Cartel and Los Etas. When the hostilities began, the Golfos joined forces with its former rivals, the Sinaloa Cartel and La Familia Michoacana, aiming to take out Los Etas. Consequently, Los Etas allied with the Beltran Leyva Cartel, the Juarez Cartel, and the Tijuana Cartel. The war was incredibly brutal. 
But despite the ongoing war, in the early 2010s, Los Zetas gained territory and gained influence. They were led by Miguel Trevino Morales during this time period. Despite the success of the Zetas in the early 2010s, the truth is, they were stretched on all fronts. They were at war with numerous cartels, and more importantly, the Mexican authorities were really cracking down on the Zetas, leading to high-ranking members being killed or arrested by military or police. On the 14th of July, 2013, Los Zetas suffered a huge blow. Mexican Marine Corps captured the Zetas leader, Miguel Angel Trevino Morales, known as Z-40, in Nuevo Leon, near Tamaulipas. However, he was soon succeeded by his brother, Omar Trevino Morales, aka Z-42. However, on the 3rd of March 2015, Mexican security forces arrested Omar Trevino Morales in a suburb in Monterrey, in Nuevo Leon, he was the last known leader of the remaining Zetas structure. The arrest of Omar was the final nail in the coffin of Los Zetas at the time. The rapid growth of the brutal organisation had exactly mirrored the rapid fall from prominence. Quite frankly, by the mid-2010s, Los Zetas were a mess. They were losing territory, they were losing influence, and infighting for leadership plagued the organisation. This led to a fracture within the original Los Zetas organization, which in turn led to a civil war. The organization split into two opposing factions, Cartel del Noreste, otherwise known in English as the Northeast Cartel, and Zetas Vieja Escuela, which in English means Zetas Old School. The two new organizations proceeded to go to war, a conflict in which still exists till this very day, However, it has been Cartel del Noreste who have got the better of this war, mainly due to having bigger finances and, quite frankly, just having more members within their organisation. Another pivotal reason why Cartel del Noreste have been winning this war and at the same time expanding their own operations is due to their highly organised and highly militaristic armed wing, Tropa del Infierno, aka the Troops of Hell. Simply put, the old school Zetas are outmanned and outgunned. They've been left behind by Cartel del Noreste, who now have significant influence and power within Mexico. They may not be at the level of CJNG, the Sinaloa Cartel, or the Gulf Cartel, but they are certainly in the tier below and are currently expanding. In particular, they have a heavy presence in Tamaulipas, Coahuila, Nueva Leon, San Luis Potosi, Morelos, and Quintana Roo, but very recently, they have entered the fray in the battleground of Zacatecas. We shall see how that progresses in the next few months, but under the leadership of Juan Gerardo Trevino Morales, nephew of Miguel Trevino Morales, they will be in the fight. However, despite the old school Zetas lagging behind their bitter rivals, they still take the fight to Cartel del Noreste, in particular in the state of Tamaulipas. Whenever they can, they will send a bloody statement of intent to their rivals, whether that be with narco banners with bodies publicly displayed, or an execution video. So nevertheless, let's get into the gore segments of the video. The video itself is around two and a half minutes long, and it's believed that it was released in around 2017. The setting is that of a desolate wooded area, and the video has been shot during the day. During the opening segments of the video, you see three old school Zetas members wearing military type gear, carrying assault rifles. They have a captive sitting on the ground in front of them, and it's clear that the captive has already been tortured as there's blood on his feet. The first 30 seconds or so is your standard cartel interrogation. The captive confirms that he's a Sicario, working for Cartel del Noreste, and he confirmed that he, along with three other comrades, came from Nuevo Laredo to warm up for Plaza. That Plaza being Ciudad Mante, where this video was shot. After the interrogation segment, they proceed with the dismemberment, and this video is rough. One of the Zetas members takes a machete and starts hacking away at the victim's legs, just above the ankles in order to remove his feet, 
And to put it lightly, this isn't a quick process. It takes several strikes with the machete to remove the victim's feet. And all throughout this, the victim is writhing in pain, still conscious and letting out pure spine chilling screams. Once the victim's feet have been removed, it appears that he goes into shock because at this point, he stops screaming, and naturally, what do the Zetas do next? Well, they then remove his arms. Essentially, they cut halfway up his forearms. They roll him over on his chest. His hands are still tied behind his back. They don't even untie him to do this. The machete-wielding cartel member just hacks away at the victim's forearms. While this is happening, you hear the victim kind of grunt in pain, but he's not screaming like he was doing previously. Once again, when it comes to removing the arms, it's not a quick process. Each hack, you can hear blade on bone, and it takes several hacks with the machete to remove both arms. Eventually, both arms are removed, and even at this point, the victim is still fully conscious. The machete-wielding cartel member then takes the victim by the hair, pulls his head up, and starts slashing at his throat with the machete, blood pours down the victim's chest, and much like in Funky Town, based on sheer intuition and survival instinct, the victim raises his arms to try and protect his throat, but obviously, he has no hands. After a while, the victim goes limp, and the cartel member then finishes the beheading by hacking away at the victim's neck. Once the beheading has been completed, we get the usual cartel shots of the head being held up to the camera, and that is pretty much the video. So yeah, this one was a really gnarly and gruesome video. The two things that stood out to me was firstly, how young the victim looked. I mean, I would guess that he was late teens, early 20s, more than likely late teens. And the second thing was the screaming during the leg dismemberment. Honestly, it's just a despicable video all round. And it's funny because I'm often asked, why are my videos predominantly based on cartels? For me, it's simple. As of right now, as far as I'm concerned, this is the most interesting topic in true crime. Mainly because this is happening in real time. This is happening right now, and it's not getting better. It's interesting because right after when I finished the info segment of this video, News broke that Cartel del Noreste leader Juan Gerardo Trevino Morales, aka El Huevo, was captured in Nueva Laredo by Mexican authorities. This prompted gun battles between the Mexican army and Cartel del Noreste members, including those of Tropa del Infierno, in a last ditch attempt to break their leader free. They also set fire to industrial vehicles to create roadblocks to affect Mexican authorities as seen in this footage, but it was to no avail. The Mexican army secured Trevino Morales, and immediately he's been extradited to the USA with no extradition process. The question is now, will he make a deal with the authorities, or will he go straight to trial? We shall see. And the other pertinent question is who will now take control of Cartel del Noreste? There are several candidates, as indicated in this social media post. Shout out to Omar for finding me this. But ultimately, time will tell how this affects Cartel del Noreste. In recent years, they have been making steady growth and have been advancing into more Mexican states. We shall see how this affects them. Will there be a steady transition of power, or will it be an internal bloody struggle like we've seen so many times in the past? we shall see. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you can enjoy this sort of content. Once again, thank you guys for the support, it's much appreciated. We are now on the verge of 200,000 subscribers, which quite frankly is beyond my wildest dreams. And yeah, you guys made this possible, you guys have made this fun and rewarding. And again, shout out to all of you guys who have helped me with certain things whether it's giving me video ideas, providing information, creating intros, music, artwork, etc, etc, and just for the support in general. Thank you guys so much. Hopefully we go from strength to strength on this channel, and we'll see where it takes us, but we're all in it together. You guys make this possible, so thank you very much. It's much appreciated. 
But as always, stay safe and I'll catch you on the next one.